Hello everyone, how you doing today? My name is Jade Kitty, you can call me Jade, and thank you for checking out my channel. And thank you for clicking on this video, it's the first video of the channel! Woo woo! <laughs> and I hope you stay till the end. So who do you see me drawing on the screen? This is Calliope Lancaster, a main character for my upcoming comic, Clockwork Thrones, which I plan to um, post on Webtoons, the app, as a uh, I don't feel comfortable like just doing something separately, so it will be there. Now, what is Clockwork Throne? Clockwork Throne is a is a comic I'm making. It's a fantasy adventure romance, probably just going to be adventure romance, and it is it was a D and D campaign that I loved. <laughs> it was a well, technically the second D and D campaign I was ever in, and I just I fell in love with it. It. I love my character, I love the character involved with it, I love the world that my husband made for it. It ended. And that sucked. I was really upset about it because I just wanted so much more out of it and I know my roommate, who is the one who created Calliope Lancaster, my roommate wanted to actually enjoy her character more and complications happen. Now, I don't want anyone to worry. Uh, me going forward with this, I have changed some characters due to the fact that I don't talk with the people anymore or I just don't want to cause any complications with certain people because I understand not everyone would be comfortable with it. So except for the main, the main characters, the three main characters, Sugiko, Min, and Calliope Lancasters, they are the originals from the OG party. Pretty much everyone else has been either NPC that my husband made or character I made up. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, um, my plans for it. I don't want to go too much into Clockwork Thrones now because it's, I want to do a video later on about it, on the, uh, deeper level, actually talk about it more. I'm planning to start posting it before tw the summer of 2020, so probably about spring-ish, or maybe if I procrastinate enough, right to the day before the summer of 2020. <laughs> and, um... I'm planning to post it on Webtoons. It's, uh, you can, uh, I believe you can actually read Webtoons on the computer, but mainly as I know of it, it's a phone app. I love Webtoons. I read a lot of Webtoons on it, both um, official, like a, I guess the Webtoons official and the canvas. And I personally think it's a great place for myself just to start off with, because I'm not confident enough in just posting my a comic on the internet and hoping, crossing fingers, that someone will read it because I don't even know where I would post it. Eh. <laughs> but as I described before, the main characters for Clock of the Throne is Tiki Cole Ferretti, um, Min, and Calliope Lancaster. So let's get into Calliope. Also, as a side note, I messed up this hand so much, I saved you guys the liberty of just cutting it out and keeping in the important parts because it was a mess. <laughs> Let's get into it. Calliope Lancaster. As I mentioned before, she was created by my roommate and my best friend, um, Chasing Fandoms. I will put a link in the description below. She actually she actually got in cosplay for Calliope. Granted, this was before I uh, did a design for her, so it's a little bit different, but still, videos are great. And when you have a real life reference, a good idea of what the personality is like, mm, it's so good. <laughs> but with Calliope, um, her father, Aiden Lancaster, owned the Lancaster Trade, an airship trade business and the main reason why they are in Fort War. Their race, the race being Faye Walker, that is what they're called, um, Faye Walkers are not from Fort War. They are from an uh, island continent called Gong to Fetch. With Gong to Fetch, it's a bit under development. However, what Aiden he likes money, he saw the airship, he wanted to break the rules, and so he did. And with that, he ended up getting a uh, business ship with Viridi, which then caused him to go to World War, and that's how Clive he went there. She ended up going when she was about five years old. So it's not uh, to her, World War is her home, she doesn't remember really much about her actual birthplace. In her mind, she was raised and raised here. With that being said, Calliope is a bit naive. <laughs> she is a little bit naive when it comes to, like innocently naive, because her goal is go to school, be an engineer, 
and eventually just become a pilot of an airship so that way I can just fly away and travel the world. Not really taking an idea of the rest of the responsibility that comes with, you know, taking over a company. <laughs> she didn't really think about that because that's not exactly where her heart lies at. But don't let that, don't let that fool you. She is not a dumb cookie. She is pretty smart. She has the brains and she will let you know when she has the brains. Just not off the bat. But right now I want to go more so into the design aspect I have for Clyde Um, I don't want to give too much away on her personality much further or my plans for Clyde P as a whole. I want to say that for a later uh, video because I plan to do a um, video of all the main characters and the uh, main support characters. Quotations. All right, so my designs with her, she's a pan. Half Satar, half Fawn. Satar and Fawns are considered part of the Fate Walkers. I also, like, I didn't want to go too far from the design that Chasing has for her because this is Chasing character. She's letting me use the character, let it, uh, giving me the liberty to change aspects, designs, and maybe some of the original backstory on Calliope, but not change Calliope altogether. And I wouldn't want to do that anyways. That would be I feel that's a bit rude on my behalf to do that to her. So first thing first, I knew for a fact she looked more like a uh, like a fawn with the exception of having satyr horns. I could work with that. Um, I, that's why I have the picture of the deer up in the corner because I wanted to grab most of my color palette and color inspirations for her uh, basic look off of that. With the hair chasing, I already decided that Clyde had a deeper hair as uh, Clyde's father here is a bit more of a brighter red while Clyde has a deeper red and it's very curly to similar to her mom and similar to Merida. I just wasn't drawing crazy Merida here. I'm sorry. I went, I, I had to tone it down. I wasn't about to do that to myself. <laughs> I like, don't get me wrong. I love Merida. I love Merida's hair. I just, I ain't about to be drawing that <laughs> all the time. I respect those an animators who did that, man. But I wanted to still keep like a, um, still want to keep it like long and have the curls and have the volume to still have the volume to the hair so that part was pretty easy now the big thing that is definitely different is how I have the eyes portrayed in in the world and um what the Liberty I talked to my husband how I want uh, what I wanted to do with Faye Walkers because I wanted to have it to the main way I can identify them is that the whites in a human's eye would actually be black for them, and then their corners are further exaggerated because they are fae walkers. They come from the fae. I, I wanted to give them some a really cool feature that all of the fae walkers had in common, and I thought it was cool. <laughs> I because um with, with animals, their pupils they tend to be really big, so you don't actually see the whites of their eyes that often. It's just you don't really see like you know their pupils. <laughs> So I uh, talked with him and it's like, hey, this is an idea I wanted to do. This is cool by you. And he's like, I don't care. I'm like, bet. <laughs> so that, that's how that conversation went. That's how it went down. And that's what I just decided. And that's how I plan to do all my Fae Walkers. That would be the biggest tattoo. Along with uh, this, another circle in their iris. So they will always have like their main eye, like the uh, Philippe iris. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. The color of their eye. Every Fae Walker will also have a, um, a white ring before the pupils. Why? Cause I thought it was cool and I like it and it makes the eye pops a bit, a bit more in my opinion. So yeah. <laughs> With the shirt, I wanted to keep it simple cause Clyde P is a bit more simple. The fact, the fact that she is of a rich fam family, of a, uh, she has the Monty. She tends to keep things more simple because she's an engineer. She doesn't really need she doesn't really want her fancy clothes to, you know, get messed up and she'd rather be comfortable. Honestly, the clothing that she is wearing is highly uncomfortable, but is only wearing it due to the fact that she is in Vora War. Vora War is very much Victorian. They have certain styles that everyone must apply to. And they don't care if the fact that the Fae Walkers have fur for their legs. They gotta wear something. So with her, she has a short skirt. Uh, Chasing already told me beforehand she was planning for Calliope to have a high, high low top. I decided to just make it sort of like the front. The front bit is a bit is higher than the actual rest of the skirt part. But I decided to just make it a, uh, a shorter skirt because I like the legs. I'm proud of the legs. The legs looks nice and beautiful. Because <laughs> where they're at, where war is very cold, they don't, when it comes to Fae Walker, they don't really need pants and they don't need extra clothing like that. Like, will they still feel cold? Yes, but 
they're not gonna feel as cold because they have fur. Yeah. <laughs> um, and mainly the biggest uh, struggle you'll see is with male Fay Walkers. Typical male Fay Walkers have to wear pants or else they're very shunned in the society of our war. And especially at the place where they're at, which is, well, the place in which the story starts off, which is the college, is a prestige college. Everyone from all over the world tries to, um, who are good with arcana and like the science, wants to get to the school because you say you go to the school, <laughs> You can you get in the places because it's just that well known. So especially there, when it comes to other races, when they have go to war, it's like you gotta wear pants or you gotta wear something over top of it, which is weird. With Calliope, it's not as horrible because she did uh, come to war war when she was five, and so she grew up with understanding and knowing the customs and growing into it. While other people who just come over for the college, they have to adapt to this new clothing style and. It can be a bit rough. <laughs> now, with the color of the skirt, uh, be it being a red and, which actually is supposed to be a burgundy. I don't know why I didn't keep the burgundy from earlier. It made me so mad when I was looking through this again, because that burgundy was so pretty, but I already decided that it was going to be red. Um, the reason why it's supposed to be burgundy and, and bronze, but it's more red and bronze now, is because the school in which they go to, that's their colors. Their color is, they have, the uh, wheel, which I realize now is actually supposed to be a, a gear wheel, not a steering wheel, but I'm making a steering wheel because I gave them a steering wheel. The steering wheel <laughs> and um, the colors being burgundy and bronze. So that's um, each character that is affiliated, that each character that's a student, because not all the main characters are a student, or main support characters are a student, just your um, your majority of them, the ones that are, will be wearing the burgundy and bronze with it. And I said, because of just how much red was in the outfit already, I didn't want to do another red shirt. I tried messing around with a couple different colors. So earlier, I said I go with the white with the undertone of red just to keep it all together. And her suitcase, well, her suitcase has a surprise in it that you'll just have to wait until later. <laughs> but if I have to say what was my biggest struggle when it came to designing Calliope other than the legs because who trust me I I didn't have them good legs from the beginning I did not draw them legs like that it was it was one struggle but other than the legs I knew the biggest struggle and I felt the biggest struggle it was her color concept she has deep red hair she's supposed to have a burgundy skirt her family color is like has an undertone of red with some stuff when it comes to their gold. The bronze I had was a had an undertone of red. It was a lot of red for one drawing, and I just I didn't want her to get lost in all the redness. So it was trying to make sure I had my values different, which is one of the biggest reasons why I wish I wish I had the skirt the burgundy that's supposed to be. But nonetheless, I finished the drawing and give it a look. And at last, there she is, Calliope Lancaster. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. If you did, it means a lot. This is the first video of the channel. Hopefully I'll see you for the next one as well. All music that I've used will be in the description below along with links to my social medias. Have a good day and remember, if you're of age, drink responsibly. Bye ya!